Welcome to Hobby Clubhouse with a review of the Bandai High Grade 1100 G Falcon unit with Gundam Double X. This is, of course, the classic HG line from the 90s when it was in 1100 scale for a short time, and that actually ended after the Gundam X series here before Bandai abandoned the HG label for quite a few years. This kit bundles the G Falcon with a Gundam Double X, which was previously released on its own as a separate kit. And we'll first review the Double X on its own, and then give the G Falcon its separate video review. This bundle was released back in November 1996 for a price of 3,000 yen. It comes in a big and satisfying box measuring 31 by 39 and just a little over 9 centimeters. There's no credit given on the box with the box art illustrator, so it's not clear who drew this, but this artist did draw all the boxes for the entire Gundam X model line way back then, whoever he or she may be. The side of the box has the expected studio shots and info on the MS itself, and then some info on the model kit. The other side tells us that the Air Master Burst and the Leopard Destroyed are planned for release and they'll both work for the G Falcon, so you're gonna get more mileage out of this kit. Inside the box, the Double X is spread across 7 runners, with one of them being the Polycaps. This sheet of foil stickers is for the Double X, with a sticker for the eyes, a red sticker for the crest on the V-fin, two red arrows for the details on the knees, and then this long white strip that wraps around the waist. The instructions come in a stapled booklet, with the back giving us some reference photos for the coloring guide. Then there is a centerfold reusing many of the photo shots from outside on the box. And the first black and white page is a detailed mechanical file on the G Falcon unit. And the rest of the black and white pages are all for assembly instructions. After a bit under 2 hours, here's the Gundam Double X, which looks bulky and aggressive thanks to the high up shoulder armor, and the wings and the cannons extending its silhouette outwards. There are many who dislike the drab coloring of the Double X, but regardless of where you stand on that issue, this kit really gives us the proper colors right out of the box. High grade kits in 1996 were premium products and you can really see that here. I think the vastly different proportions on this kit is a good reason to pick it up even today if you're not a big fan of the Master Grade kit's slower shoulders and its really big wings. Also something from the 90s are the abundance of panel lines all over the kit. Kits from the time often try to give a hyper detailed rendition of the animated versions of an MS. The TV animation in the pre-computer era couldn't afford to be too detailed and elaborate, so especially with something as complex as a giant robot, Bandai's direction at the time was to have the model kit supplement your image of an MS with more decorated designs. This has become something of an aesthetic style all of its own, and you can see this revived in the RE100 line. So if you're getting this sort of kit, it's better to use a lighter gray to do the panel lines, or else that many black lines all bunched together will be very busy and very distracting. Now let's have a look at one of the key features of the Gundam Double X, the twin satellite cannon. To use it, you'll need to flip open the wings, then the middle wing flips down, and you have the reflector panels fully deployed. The surface is a lovely chrome surface, which is very appropriate for this part and it doesn't look garish at all. But you will notice that the pegs of the wing is strangely long and it doesn't look good at all. But going back to the transformation, you then flip up the cannon barrels and then you extend them to the full length. Next, you pull up the camera module and they're supposed to have these clear green parts inside but I've left mine out for painting. And here you can see one of the big flaws of the cannons where they don't line up properly at all with the shoulder mounts. The mounts are placed much wider than the cannon barrels are, and the barrels won't point straight forward if you lean them into the mounts. Now it doesn't break the entire kit, but this is an important feature of the double X, so it is a big problem if it doesn't look right like it is right here. But one big plus are the radiator plates on the arms which fan open once you lift the cover up. The same goes for the ones on the legs, and it's a very simple and clever design, and it'll make sure your fins look great every time you open them up. Another note on these fins is that the entire assembly can be removed, so it'll be much easier to paint and put together afterwards for a builder. And with that, the Gundam Double X is now ready to fire its twin satellite cannons. The cannons are connected on a single polycap, and they really struggle to hold up the barrels that go so far off the center of gravity. 
the cannons will sag and they'll drift from side to side when you move the model, and in the long run, as the plastic shrinks, the problem will get worse. The transforming mechanism is smooth enough overall that you won't mind doing it too often, so it deserves credit for that. Also, the tip of the barrels have a separate grey piece, which is a bit of extra work the engineers put in for you. Overall, it does the job, but it does inherit all the engineering strengths and the flaws from the 90s. Next, let's look at the beam rifle, which is two pieces sandwiched together, but the handle itself is a separate part. And this is actually a nice design because the body of the gun is supposed to be mostly white. So that's going to be one less thing you have to mask if you're going to paint this. Otherwise, it's really not a complicated weapon. It's nice and it's thick, so it's sized properly to complement the MS's proportions. The hands hold onto it really well, and there are no big complaints here. Next, we have the Hyper Beam Swords, whose handles are docked into the side skirts, and you can pull them off just like this. You get two green beam parts, and they go on just as nicely. The details sculpted on the beam parts are a little on the simple side though, but that's how things were back then. And while we're on the subject, in the box you get this other small beam effect part that goes unused. Now this is for the beam javelin, which is one of the several weapons you get if you buy the double X as a standalone kit. This bundle omits those extra weapons, so it's not 100% the same kit. But anyway, the beam sword is perfectly functional, and it's a good weapon. And next is the shield, which is strangely called the defense plate in universe. Now I've never been a big fan of the design because it looks like it was haphazardly put together with a bunch of trash, and it really doesn't match the aesthetics of the double X at all. But the looks aside, this one in the kit is nicely made. The separate red top on part is very thick, and the whole shield gives you the idea that it, it's very sturdy. The back handle is simple, and it's squared so the shield's gonna stay upright. The slit up top goes into the side of the forearm and it stays on just well enough. So really there's not a lot of complaints here either. So on to the articulation. Starting from the top, the head dips forward just a little bit and surprisingly looks very far upwards. The side to side turning is limited by the little bits jutting up from the face, and in case you didn't know, this is to make the head have an X shaped silhouette, and now you can never unsee that, you're welcome. The shoulder armor swing up and down independently, and the whole arm can lift outwards to 70 degrees, and they do swing well, but you have to move the shoulder armor a little bit out of the way. It goes back quite far until it hits the wing on the back. And it goes the other way until it hits the wing as well. The elbow joint is split apart, so the forearm can rotate a full circle. The elbow is double jointed and it can bend close to 180 degrees. The hands are on a ball joint, so you can adjust the angle or you can spin it all the way around. The fingers are articulated, so the trigger finger and the lower three fingers are both individually movable. The waist is on a peg and it doesn't bend forward or backwards at all, but it does spin around a full circle. The front skirts come separated and they're both on ball joints. The side skirts swivel around a little bit, but it's quickly blocked by the thighs and the waist. The back skirt is fixed and it does not move. And while we're back here, the thrusters here can swivel, but they're joined together, so they do move together. The legs kick up a bit over 90 degrees, and they go back only a little bit before quickly hitting the back skirt. They swing outwards about 45 degrees, and this joint is a bit of a problem because they do slip outwards if the kit stands on a smooth surface where the bottom of the foot can slide. The knees are double jointed, but they only manage about 90 degrees. The ankle armor can swivel a little bit, and the foot goes up this much, and it goes back this much, and it tilts inwards this much, but it doesn't tilt outwards at all because of the radiator fins. Overall, the articulation is a little bit better than average for the time. It can't do very dynamic poses, but it covers all the basic movements without any glaring issues. With all that said, here's the Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the high grade 1100 Gundam XX. Number 1. 
It's beautifully proportioned and beautifully colored. The double X is bulky and it's aggressive, and it has all the colors in all the right places, and it doesn't rely on stickers for its colors. So it's not gonna look bad even next to modern kits. Number two, loose joints ruin the fun. Now the tolerances of the poly caps from 1996 just aren't as strict as they are today. In several areas like the cannons and the thighs, they just aren't strong enough to withstand even normal handling. And as the kit ages, this will become worse, so it's not an issue you can escape from if you're gonna buy this kit. Number 3, it's surprisingly friendly for builders. Parts like the radiator fins and the legs allow convenient seam removal and painting and can be reassembled without much hassle. There's no shortage of seam lines of course, but they're not going to be obnoxious to work on. So, if you're looking for an easier project, this is actually far less complicated than the modern MG kit to customize and color up, so consider it. So that's a review for the HG Gundam XX from 1996. We'll continue this bundle's review with a separate video for the G Falcon, so make sure to go check that out. But don't forget to look us up on social media with updates on new videos and upcoming projects, links are in the description below. Or hang out here a little longer with one of these other videos, watch the G Falcon review. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when there's a new video from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.